Hey, well, what's up, everyone? Welcome to The Collision. Daniel here. And I am honored today to be joined by two very special guests, uh, Ryan and Caddy Chase, the creators and star of the delightful new show, Wonderful Day with Mabel McClay, which is now streaming on the Bent Key streaming platform that just launched. Uh, welcome, guys. I know that you guys, this is an exciting week for you guys. I'm sure it's a very uh, busy week, uh, but I appreciate you guys taking the time just to, to chat about your new show. Well, thank you so much for having us. We are so thrilled. It's funny when you work on something for a really long time it it all matters but then it matters a lot in that moment that it goes out to the world and we start to hear feedback from real kids and real families so yes it's been a really exciting week yeah well i've been one of the ones that have been uh that has already offered some feedback because i had the opportunity i have now seen uh the three episodes i think that have been uh, released uh, so far and let me just say this is a delightful show i really enjoyed this show Obviously, I'm a bit older than the target audience, but I am a parent. Uh, I have two eight-year-old twin boys, and this is exactly the type of show uh, that they uh, that they would enjoy, that they would be into. So I'm definitely planning on letting them uh, watch it as well. But maybe to kick things off, um, why don't either of you guys share a bit about the this the inspiration uh, for this show? I know it was described to me as uh, Mr. Rogers meets Mary Poppins, uh, which seemed like a very apt description for what this show is. But uh, maybe share a bit of sort of what the the inspiration was for this show, and then also just for the uh, the Mabel McKay uh, character and sort of where she came from. Sure. Yeah. Um. A, a ton of inspiration came from Mr. Rogers. It's our favorite show to show our kids and we love especially the way that it felt and the way that it was paced and the way that he spoke to children and so we drew a ton of inspiration from that and then we also realized we want to meet modern kids where they are and their attention spans are are slightly different and their taste and everything so that's i suppose where the mary poppins aspect came in of sprinkling in some whimsy and some fun and a lot of playfulness so that's what we hoped to achieve with the show in general and also with the character of mabel for sure yeah and i even wanted to sprinkle in a little of uh mr wizard from mr wizard's world the classic uh early 80s show where you know she's practical too she's making these inventions she's um you know she's finding these bunch of things out in the world and um uh, you know, hopefully in, inspiring uh, kids to uh, to see the ordinary and, and turn into something extraordinary and fun with their imagination. So. Uh, so, yeah, we took a we took a lot of inspiration from from those and then also her natural ability to just be magical with kids uh, and uh, and and focus that in. So we had a, um, a long history of working with kids. We've worked with kids our whole careers and most notably with an improv studio that we owned and operated in Los Angeles for 10 years. Um, and so through that work, we looked at a lot of social emotional skills every day. That was really our style of teaching improv comedy, not to make kids be hilarious, but to help them with having courage and help them with listening and and um, and having teamwork with, with a partner on stage. And so um, in a lot of ways, this show is an extension of all that work. And um, we're, we're really proud of it to, to keep doing that thing that we love, which ultimately is teaching kids. Yeah, I think one of the special things too about this type of program is I feel like most adults, we have a Mabel McClay, we have one of those characters from our own uh, childhood. I grew up in Canada, so our my my guy was Mr. Dressup. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of him, but he was sort of our Mr. Rogers up there uh, in Canada. And this does feel like a show that that Mabel McClay will be that character uh, for, a, for a new generation of, of young viewers. Um, but you, you guys are doing double duty. You guys have double responsibility with the show. Uh, not only are you launching your own uh, brand new TV show, uh, but you're also helping launch an entire new network, uh, the Bent Key streaming platform. This show is one of the flagship shows that is being uh, uh, promoted and, and kind of one of the big launch titles uh, for this show. Uh, why don't you share a little bit of this about why Bent Key is, uh, you feel a good fit? How is that? Um, kind of what's your vision with this show in that network? I know uh, there's been some questions, a lot of curiosity. It's maybe some hesitation with uh, a platform that's launched, kind of belonging to a predominantly political group and whether that's going to influence the show. And uh, But in your own experience, how is, uh, how is the Bent Key platform just been a good fit for your show? For us, it's been absolutely a perfect fit um, with our uh, with our family. 
our kids haven't really grown up with a, a, a television much. Uh, we've always had a little uh, lunchbox size projector where we, uh, you know, we curate uh, what, you know, what we show them. And it's usually, you know, old classics and, and things, you know, little DVD box sets. And so, cause we just don't have, um, it's a daunting task to have all the time to screen everything your kids uh, have to see, much less um, what they, you know, what m other messages and things might be coming in through commercials and all, all the all the things. So when they had this idea to to have an app that is um, that you could just put on and a kid could put on anything and you don't have to worry. And it's um, um, it's already curated and built for that pro for that uh, purpose in mind that it's a, a just a just a safe wholesome just um environment for kids to watch and learn we we thought man this is amazing and um we've been absolutely blessed to be any part of that well one of the first things that they said to us and in, upon initial meeting was our vision is completely apolitical content content that's focused on wholesome joyful shows that kind of feel the way that they used to and we thought oh we can help with that. That's our thing. We love uh, shows of the past for kids. We have a taste for that. We want to see a, a show that's a bit less stimulating and fast paced and more gentle and calm. And um, so we just feel so aligned with that vision for sure. Yeah, and I know I'm I'm fortunate because of what I do and a reviewer and the our, the Collision website. I, I am able to see a lot of these shows and a lot of these movies and and sort of you know know ahead of time before my own kids watch. But I know a lot of parents, uh, you know, it's not their full time job to to be reviewing these things. And I think that is one of those uh, benefits of the Ben Key. It seems there is a lot of promise to to be a platform that. Uh, that you can trust. Uh, Keta, Keta, you mentioned actually earlier um, just about the tone, and that is thing I wanted. To, that's thing I touched on in my review, and I also wanted to uh, just hear some of your perspective on that because that to me uh, that was maybe my favorite part about this show was just the tone. Uh, it's not a sugar rush. It's not just trying to hype up kids. Which, as a parent, thank you for that. Uh, it is a very calm show. But I think even more than that, it's a show that uh, that actually respects children. It's a show that doesn't talk down to kids or doesn't treat kids like they, um, you know, like they don't have intelligence and they can't handle uh, important truths. It's uh, I think in my review, uh, I the way I phrase it is it's a show that empowers and inspires uh, rather than just tries to reform kids and just teach them to to behave and obey uh, obey their parents. Um, was that an intentional decision, like the tone as far as sort of that approach and sort of Kind of what is your vision for children and sort of how to approach some of that? Yes, well, everything that you just mentioned was mostly our main vision was um, a show that had a character that spoke to children in a way that, yes, honored their intelligence, that used big vocabulary words and expected them to kind of keep up, um, that wasn't afraid of walking through her house uh, quietly, quietly wondering to herself about what just happened and doesn't feel the need to fill all that space with anything. Um, so she's calm and gentle and respectful. And uh, that was a, the most important thing for us about the show, for sure. Yeah, because even the even the um, like the themes of each episode uh, aren't necessarily the ones that uh, you might expect from a, a show aimed at kids. Um, you know, sort of the, the typical topics of this episode is going to teach kids to obey their parents or clean up their room or a lot of the more behavioral thing. I've only seen the first three episodes. so You guys might get to some of those and those are still important. Uh, topics, but I was intrigued by this the, the choices of what to focus on. Uh, like the first episode is on kind of um, creativity, and the the second episode on just curiosity. And um, you know, it's not usual to see a a kids uh, a kids entertainment show where they're talking about writer's block and songwriting and uh, actually things about contributing rather than just sort of um, behavior and, and falling in uh, in line. What was some of the um, I guess your perspective on that or, or, or the choices to focus on those, uh, the topics more about contributing rather than just sort of being more passive. I think that comes directly as a result of our background as as artists and comedians and um, people who have worked with kids in a capacity that's highly creative. And we often laugh that some of the children we used to teach, their parents would come and pick them up and we'd be like, they said this, they thought up this, very silly imaginative story and we would explain it and the parent would be like cool that's super nice and we were like we think it's incredible so just our our genuine tastes and gifts in life tend toward um the creative and we delight in children and we 
we find them to be so joyful and they do have so much to offer and we do get to episodes like um, responsibility and self-control and respect we do get to those two in fact i think we have basically four categories of types of skills that we get to in our mind um, but leading with creativity was important to us because that is it that's what we know and that's what we believe about children that they can be creative and um and they're certainly very curious and that's a wonderful thing that leads to kids when we embrace that idea about them that they're curious and they love to wonder um and we preserve that i think we create lifelong learners in it um is such an important thing. We homeschool our kiddos, and so we work really hard at that, um, making learning fun for sure, and creative and weird and funny and all of those things because the sort of obey and uh, open your math book to page seven uh, stuff, at least for our kids, just flat out doesn't work. So um, that has a lot to do with our personal experience, I think. Yeah, because even the title of the show, Wonderful Day, uh, in the context of the show, means a lot more than just having a good day. It's not just a, an enjoyable day, but just the focus all throughout, uh, really, of each episode, just the beauty of wondering, of, of asking questions, uh, which, like you said, Katty, as a parent, I know that's what kids do. That's what they do best. They ask questions. They see uh, seemingly insignificant objects, and uh, their their brains start working, and they start imagining what that could become. And, uh, you know, I think that's one of the things that children can actually teach adults. So I love that this show uh, focuses on that and just sort of encourages kids to keep wondering, keep asking uh, questions. And we'll hear the collision, a lot of the stuff that we do with, with culture and um, kind of evaluating culture and just having conversations uh, with it comes from a Christian perspective and uh, kind of thinking about, you know, what the scriptures say and what, how do we contribute uh, more than just critics, but just how do we engage and how do we, uh, you know, have something to, to offer. I know you, you're both Christians, you're believers. The show itself isn't necessarily, uh, you know, you're not opening the Bible and uh, reading a bunch of Bible stories or, um, you know, a lot, a lot of scripture references, although the show very much does uh, affirm those uh, Christian beliefs, those Christian values. Uh, maybe for either one of you guys, how has your own faith informed the way that you've approached this show? And uh, and maybe a follow up to that is this: why is it important in your experience for Christians to be involved in this area, in the entertainment industry and creating content like this? I think it's, in, well, our faith is very important to us and our family and we, um, it is an it informs all aspects of, of our life uh it's it really fuels our thankfulness and uh gratitude specifically in this besides the responsibility you have of uh of, of uh teaching and guiding uh, our own children and uh, having this opportunity to um, provide something that people would feel safe and want to put into their homes and and have their kids watch that is a great responsibility and we don't take that lightly um but in, in terms of our faith, there's a, uh, it just feels, we know that we, uh, I trust that there's a bigger plan and there's a big old planner and uh, the things that led us here uh, to be even talking to you and uh, about this show, um, you know, he was, uh, he was weaving that story uh, and connecting those dots the whole time. And we're just so thankful. And so it's a little that uh, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. And uh, we, our prayer is that we hope that that comes through in this, uh, in the show, and um, and there were lots of people of of faith that worked on the show that we didn't know uh, when we started, and by the end, uh, uh, in fact, we had a, there was a great moment where uh, um, uh, the we uh, the the lights went out while we were shooting one of our uh, episodes. There was a big power uh, outage um by our by the studio and then we found uh folks uh gathering together uh, uh singing and um and they had, they had known each other maybe through uh their own uh, churches and bible studies and it was just i don't know it was just there, there was a lot of that and so um we find ourselves just being uh thankful and grateful and uh we hope that uh, that the goodness that is beyond us that i believe um was uh you know, by God's creation uh, comes through and, and we just hope to be a, uh, a blessing to, to folks uh, who work with us or, and see the, see the product. It was an inter interesting challenge to, um, because the show is not a strictly faith-based show. We really wanted to share timeless virtues and values that all families of all faiths could appreciate and enjoy. Um, 
but we're teaching these virtues. So I'm, I'm thinking back to developing the forgiveness episode. And for us, we have such a very specific point of view about forgiveness and what that means in our, in our lives. Um, so it was an, it was interesting to how do we shape these episodes to, uh, to be accessible for all families in the same way that Mr. Rogers did. Um, he had such a mainstream impact and he was an ordained minister and you never heard that once come out of his mouth mouth on camera um and so we were inspired that because by that his light was shining the whole time and and i think everyone felt it and he's such a beloved uh presence in the kids entertainment world and so definitely we will never <laughs> reach mr roger's status in terms of all those things but we were really inspired in that way yeah, and even when you read when you read the Gospels, there's few things closer even to Jesus's own heart than children, uh, and just kind of constantly him trying to help adults re regain some of the wonder of childhood and some of the innocence. Uh, so this show definitely, I, I feel, um, furthers that uh, furthers that mission. Um, maybe kind of last. Uh, I don't want to keep you guys uh, long. I know it's been a, uh, probably a hectic week for you guys. Uh, but just maybe any last thoughts as far as sort of what you hope uh, this show achieves, what you hope uh, kids take away from it, and maybe any surprises or anything to look forward to uh, for the rest of this season? Well, we really hope that children turn off the show at the end of it and go make something or or wonder about something or collect something. We've certainly been starting to hear stories of that uh, that are our very favorite. Um, um, we hope they write us letters for the Wonder Wheel. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and so um, I, I, I certainly I certainly hope it's a source of uh, maybe not a show that you sit around and binge and and uh, it's not a it's not a show that's like a sugary drink. It's like a glass of cold water and then turn it off and feel really good and go get to wondering out in the world. Um, so I think that's our our hope for the main takeaway. Uh, recently, our our daughter had screened um, our episode on courage and after we watched, I found her in the backyard. This wasn't for me. She didn't know I was with an earshot, but she was singing the little song about courage to climb the tree that her older brother can constantly get up to with all of his friends, and she had never done it before. And so that was obviously so special. And what we hope for any child watching is that they might take these lessons and these songs out into their lives. And there are also so many fun things beyond the lessons that happen in this show. I mean, we had an incredible adventure of Mabel um, learning to throw a football on in the middle of a giant football field with a famous head coach. Um, she learns to ice skate from Scott Hamilton. She goes to a chocolate factory and makes chocolate. She has incredible musicians come and teach her instruments. Um, she goes to a fire station. There are so many, the zoo, mm -hmm. there's just so many adventures that we hope in equal parts, children find the show to be um, something that they they learn these values and social emotional skills from, but also that they just think is fun and exciting. We try to tackle both of those things in equal parts. Yeah, well, judging from a lot of the early um kind of initial responses. Uh, it seems like you guys have a home run. This show is accomplishing those things. And I do think this is a show that's going to inspire a lot of uh, young viewers to wonder, to be creative, to explore, to create, uh, which, hey, congratulations on that. But it's been an absolute pleasure. I know you guys are busy this week, but uh, thank you so much for just taking time out of this week and uh, chatting about your show. Uh, I've enjoyed it. Uh, so thank you guys for that. And all the best uh, for the rest of this week and the rest of the season uh, as it continues to roll out. Thank you so much, Daniel. It was so kind. Thanks we for having us. We appreciate it.